Okay, so very first card. A lot of you might have started a new training program, a new job, or a new course of study here. And um, one of the advice here is, you know, being very patient about the situation. Um, it's very difficult when you are in a, I feel like the environment that you're in, people are not, um, are, I wouldn't say it's cutthroat, but people that might have like, um, that might be in a position of authority are kind of being tyrannical, if I can say that. If it's um if it's like a training program, I do feel that you are going to be working under like the mandates, dictates of somebody else. And it gets a little frustrating because um instead of like um I do feel that it's a good environment though, but um the the people are a little bit more authoritative than the, than you would like. So then you don't really you feel like you might be under scrutiny, you might be micromanaged, and you might be under attack. So there's an element here that, you know, being patient is the key here because the people want you to do well. It seems almost as if they're grooming you for bigger and better things. So then they want you to like um, do things the right way and to do the way that they want. They want you to do it because it's been proven that it works for them. So that element is in uh, is at play here. So you know, don't stress over it. Just you know, give them the benefit of the doubt. They've been around. I feel for a lot longer than you have in that company, in that organization, in that uh, institution, in that structure, okay? So be patient about it. And um, if, for example, you are dealing with a fire sign, especially like a Leo, so fire signs, Aries, Sagittarius, Leos, but especially a Leo because of uh, the strength card coming in, this person is going to help you, okay? They're, they're like going out of their way to really like um, spend the time with you and to, to, to almost like... Um, to groom you is what I'm sensing. If you look at this card, the angel is almost like grooming the beast. Um, it can be interpreted as, you know, she's calming the beast, soothing the beast. But I, I, I'm getting here that these people are grooming you to be like the, the next supervisor almost. Okay, so you're in a very good position for those of you who have just started out a new job or a new uh, internship or are in a new situation in which you're working under other people or you're working you're working based on the guidelines dictated by other people. Okay. So be patient about this. And, um, I do feel the internship. So for example, if they say that, okay, you have to do, you know, three months training, I do feel it is going to get dragged on past three months, but mainly because they see the potential in you. So because of it, I would advise you to just stick it through and, you know, listen to what they have to say and just be patient. Um, I don't feel a lot of you are going to have trouble doing this, but I would, um, for example, if the, the work itself is like very um, tedious, for example, and you, you, you know, being a social butterfly, you do want something a little more exciting. If it is tedious, then it's hard for you to sit still, but ultimately, you know, the gains associated with this. So you're going to be quite happy and quite content doing the work. Okay, so that's what's coming in first for the first week. And let's see the rest of the cards. Yeah, so the work environment itself, there is... Um, there are clashes in ideas, and that would explain why. And you know, as um, as a the balancing scales, um, you are very like susceptible, and you're very sensitive to like um, people bickering, to like bad vibes. <coughs> Excuse me. You are very sensitive to um, to like a, a conflict environment. You don't enjoy it. You don't enjoy working in that type of environment for your work. And in general, you don't feel that um, that's the environment that you want to be in. You don't like a cutthroat environment, okay? And um, you don't enjoy confrontation and conflict. So that's one of the things that might be troublesome about this work environment. But I can uh, assure you that this is something, you know, sometimes we have like um, things that we avoid. But um, those are things are actually, they might be good for us to cultivate the skills like our, your diplomacy, for example, might be required in this work environment and your supervisors might sense that about you. So that's why they want to groom you for a supervisory role so that you can mediate like conflict later on when they leave, for example, okay? So either way, they sense something in you. You, you have like... Um, really good qualities that they're looking for. So as a result, they're spending their extra time grooming you for this high position and to make sure that um, you do the job right, okay? So what I am getting as well is um, 
this work situation itself seems very, very uh, promising. So one of the thing is, um, based on the rest of the cards and how they play out, I do feel a lot of you might be returning to a previous uh, work employment situation, okay? So a lot of you might be trying to do that, might, might be like uh, attending like... Um, so if you've left a work situation in the past, mainly because of the conflict too, I do feel for this month there's an opportunity to return to it. There's an opportunity to like um, hash out your differences with in that work environment with your supervisors, with the people that you have multiple like confrontations with, for example. So there's an opportunity here to resolve this issue, to achieve like a very um, to achieve like closure and to like um, resolve disputes and to have a very satisfying resolution in that work environment. Okay. And additionally, for those of you who have recently gotten out of divorces, for example, separation, divorces, broken relationships, for example, where you have pretty much walked out of it because, you know, it, there was a lot of conflict associated with it. And you're just like, it, it was um, damaging to your mental health more than anything, okay? Like, it, it made you very, like, nervous. It made you very, like, um, it, it made you feel very frazzled. So you had to check yourself out of that situation, okay? So if we're talking about like a relationship, I do feel there is an opportunity here coming through for you to um, go back to the situation to rekindle because there is, once again, a great love situation coming into the picture for you, okay? And we also have the wish card, which is... Um, if this is something that you've been that's been on your mind and you're wondering if the other person will come back, I, I am getting here that yes, there is a do-over for this month in which you can go back and fix that situation and decide what you want to do, okay? The only thing I would say here is that um so I am getting so if you're dealing with somebody, for example, who is um who was very controlling, who was very like um you know, argumentative, like even aggressive, for example, and um, and you're just like dreading the fact that you have to go back and resolve issues, I would say, you know, you're going to be pleasantly surprised by the reception that they're going to give you. So I do feel that if in the past they have been difficult, now they've changed somewhat and they're going to be more receptive towards you, okay? So there's an opportunity here to fix a past problem it is coming through so that you can resolve it and that you can like face your enemies head on because um there tends to be like a sense of evasiveness when it comes to like you know your diplomacy and the way you you carry yourself you you tend to avoid conflict so there is a do over there's a chance to rework this thing and to fix it and i do feel it would be beneficial for you to go back and fix this situation, okay? And, um, you know, you don't have to, like, if it's a, a love partnership or, like, a marriage, um, a, a divorce, a separation, or, you know, just a breakup that you've dealt with very recently, um, possibly even, like, beginning of May for most of you, May, June, and, uh, you know, residual energy coming in for June, I do feel that there there's an opportunity here to um, go back to it and fix it. The only danger is, you know, be discriminate about who it is that you're dealing with. If the other person is just, like, totally just... Um, if they just don't want to see outside of themselves, so they're so like tunnel vision, they're so self-absorbed, and if they're just like at the point where they don't really want to like, um, they don't feel that, they feel entitled about not having to do the work, then don't go back and rekindle that situation, okay? So you have two opportunities, and depending on which camp you fall under, and depending on what type of a relationship that was, then I do feel that, you know, you can decide what you want to do. It can be like a great love in which there was a falling out and you have a chance now to fix it and, you know, go with it because but at the end of our lives, it's mainly the things that we don't do that we regret, okay? So if you want to give this another try, by all means, go ahead because um, so that you don't uh, miss out on this opportunity. At the same time, if like it was once a great love but you cannot agree on how to, you know, how to move forward with one another. So for example, one person might want to get married, the other one doesn't. One person might want like five kids, the other one one wants none. And one person wants to settle in an urban area, one person wants to be 
and on an island, for example. These are like innate differences that, you know, despite having this one great love for one another, if you don't see eye to eye on basic living arrangements and basic things for your future, it's really hard to fix. Okay, so um, I do sense that, you know, being the, the scales, you are very accommodating of other people. So this time around, demand what it is that you you feel that you deserve okay so that is going to be in order so a little bit more of an aggressive approach for this month is going to be required of you as well okay you're dealing with very aggressive energy and you tend to shy away from that so i do feel that um you have the emperor in the reverse position, which indicates a tyrant, okay? It's it's somebody that is uh, that feels very entitled, that is very tunnel vision, that is like very fixed in his or her opinion. And um, a lot of you are dealing with fire signs. Um, so it could be Leo, uh, Aqu Aries. So the Leo person, I feel that that's the one person that is worth going back to and rekindling, Okay. So if you're in a relationship with a Leo, I would strongly advise you, you know, that Leo is um, is going to, like, um, accommodate you. Leos are very good, like, faithful and even, like, um, devoted partners. And uh, because this card is the card of Aries, it's shown up in the reverse position. So if you're dealing with, like, somebody who's very difficult, and in particular if it's an Aries, I do feel that you have some work cut out for you, Okay. Um, that doesn't mean it, it won't work. It just means that it's going to require like multiple negotiation um, sessions in order to get this person to um, to like um, come around in order to get this person to like um, to to I guess like learn to put themselves in other people's shoes okay so that's uh, going to be required of you and additionally um, a lot of people you know in general for all the signs for this month I do feel it's because of the July 4th holiday season or something like that but a lot of a lot of court cards and also you don't have court cards you have a lot of major arcana cards but they are all representative of a different person so um, if you're dealing with a fire sign try to go back and fix it okay um, for a lot of you too, I do sense that um, the financial situation itself is going to be um, is going to pick up for you. Okay, so financially you don't have to worry because we are going through an escalation here. So um, you have you start with three and then you end with nine. Granted, it's in the reverse position, so I do feel that by the end of the month expenditures are going to creep up on you so be careful about you know managing your budget and things like that don't be too extravagant about you know um spending okay especially towards the end of the month because if it feels as if you know you you start out with like a, a three of pentacles and then you hit the star card in which things are just like illuminated in, in which you know your life is just going like um amazingly well and you're just like okay nothing can go wrong but then there's a little bit of, of a financial stall towards the end of the month. So take that into uh, consideration as well, okay? And um, I do feel that we are ending on the death card in the reverse position. And I, I'm not really sure what that is referring to. It can be relationships that can go back to, but I do feel it is telling me an unfinished story. So let's see what else is... What else we can glean from this? So I'm going to try to pull out like just one card and see if that's enough. Okay. Okay, so yeah, I was going to say the death card is the card of um, Scorpio, actually. For those of you who are dealing with like a water sign, so Libras, for those of you dealing with a Cancer, um, Pisces, Scorpio, I do feel that this person is going to come in bearing gifts. This person is very sincere though, okay? But don't rush into it. So please don't rush into it. And um, there is almost, what I'm getting here is um, a lot of you are going to have a new relationship, a new love coming in for you for this month. And I do feel that this is, um, you know how when you meet somebody and you're just like, I'm really physically attracted to them. And for example, if you are male or female Libras and your normal criteria for dating somebody has always been like physical attractiveness, for example, just for an example, um, this person is not going to be like, you know, is not going to fit your ideal type. However, they have a lot to offer you in terms of like emotional fulfillment, okay? And for example, for those of you who are just like, okay, um, 
maybe your criteria is that you want somebody who is, um, I don't know, maybe you, you want somebody of your same ethnicity or, you know, religious persuasion or, you know, someone who subscribes to the same political um, belief system, for example, okay? This person is going to be drastically different from what you have imagined, but it is going to work out really well. So the, the main thing here is um, don't be too discriminate, okay? Give people a chance and let them, give them an opportunity to open themselves up. So one of the major theme for this month is that the things that you've been doing, you're going to end up doing them differently. And one of the main thing about Librans in general is that um, you tend to be very passive, okay? Like you, you accommodate people. You sense like uh, imbalances in relationships and you always try to fix it, okay? You always try to like uh, balance the give and take within the relationship, okay? That will only work if you're with somebody who will meet you halfway. If you're with somebody who takes advantage of you, for example, they are just going to take and take and take and then you end up with nothing. You end up very depleted and very sad, okay? So one of the, the main thing is coming through, you have to stand your ground and you have to like be open um, to, to, to conflict, to like communication, to discourse, to uh, conversation. So what I'm getting here is like... Um, so, for example, you are so sensitive to, like, arguments and conflict that you try to avoid it, okay? So, if you're meeting somebody who comes with a different worldview, who comes with a different, like, uh, set of values and opinions about, you know, the way things work in the world and the way the world functions, ask questions, you know, ask them, like, how do you feel about this? Rather than saying, oh, I don't agree with you, just ask to see where they're coming from and to see, like, if it's, you know, if there's any validity. Because I do feel this sense is coming in for Geminis and Aquarius as well, in which you're just like, um, okay, you and I don't see eye to eye, so, you know, we'll, we just can't be friends. Well, that's not true. As long as you understand where the other person's coming from, you don't have to agree. You just have to, like... Um, at least understand where, what it is that drives them, what, what it is that motivates them, and what it is that shape their, their worldview. Because we arrived at truths about the world based on our life experiences, okay? We don't always have the same life experiences. So that means that you can't discredit somebody else's belief system if it doesn't align with yours. So one other thing is that you are going, going to encounter a, a person or a situation or like a group of people who are going to ask you to defend yourself. And I mean, like, in a way, that's like, it's not physical defense in which you're all, like, riled up, ready to fight. I don't feel it's that way. But you might perceive it to be that way. What I'm getting here is um, you're going to encounter people who are very different from you. And they're going to ask you some questions just to see where you're coming from, just to make sense of what you're all about. So instead of tensing up, just tell them like, okay, so, you know, this is my life story and this is what I I believe and here are the reasons why I believe the things that I do. And uh, doing that will like not only win you over a lot of, um, you know, your former opponents, it will also allow other people to understand where you're coming from. And it will also like um, give you that opportunity to display your strength display your sense of like your resilience and even like um to to defend your beliefs and people will look at you in a different light okay so going back to what i mentioned earlier about um i about like the new love situation i do feel it is a, a new lease on love okay so it can be a rekindling type of situation going back to a previous partner I do feel a lot of you, it is going to be a new person, okay? This is a, an air, uh, excuse me, a water sign. This is somebody who is quite sincere, who's, um, who's also quite passive and shy, okay? So if you're looking for a partner that, you know, where you don't have to, like, have all these disputes all the time, where they always constantly ask you, you know, to defend yourself and where you feel like the need to be on, like, um, defense mode, for example, then you're going to meet somebody that you, you get along with really well. They're very accepting as well. And they're going to like, you know, they, they approach life with a very like um, open-minded attitude. So nothing you say will face them and they're not going to ask you, they're not going to corner you and ask you like, why, did you, why do you feel this way? You know, like what happened to you to make you feel this way? Or 
what about your upbringing that made you believe the things that you do? They're not going to ask that. They're just very accepting and welcoming. And um, sincerely, they truly want to be with you. So this is a very, very good energy for you guys. Um, let me know, please, how this plays out for you. I'm very curious, um, mainly because Ace of Cups is next to the lovers in the reverse position. So I do feel that a lot of this is going to be like a new lease on a previous love situation, a resolution to a previous love conflict. And at the same time, it's sort of like having a new love situation in your life that will allow you to um, overcome all the emotional baggage from the past as well, okay? So a lot of you might like have ended a relationship and then gone to another and then that one doesn't work and then you're just looking at your, your past dating history and you're like, oh my gosh, two failed relationships. Well, the thing about that is um, when you rush into, you know, one after the other, they rarely work out, okay? I've seen it many, many times. It just doesn't work out very well. So it is important for you to take some time in between relationships, especially like significant relationships, to heal yourself and to process what went wrong or, you know, what went right or even your involvement, your role in it, to understand it before you can move on to the next thing, okay? So I do feel that... Um, if that is something that you're grappling with, where you're just like, one relationship just ended and then you have your eye on somebody else, take some time off, okay? Because this person seems like they're a good fit. He or she, is, oh, as a water sign, seems like a very good fit. So um, you want this one to last. And, you know, it, it seems like he or she is very sincere and they're going to wait around for you. So, you know, take some time off in between relationships. Don't jump the gun on this one as well, okay? Because you want this one to last. And you want that tight, that time in between relationships, like that buffer time to heal yourself and to like figure out your next step as well, okay?